Hey guys, welcome back to lesson two of your dog obedience trainer crash course. Today what we're gonna be talking about is sit, down, and then we're gonna start our introduction to stay as well. So when we're talking about sit, Generally speaking, this is one of the easiest commands that people are ever going to teach their dogs. So we probably won't spend too much time on it. However, what I do want to make sure that I cover with you is a way that you can make sure that the dog is going to sit if you have one that's being a little bit resistant, um, as well as how you can start adding duration to that sit right away, which will make your stay a much, much easier cue to teach. So the first thing that I'm just going to go ahead and demonstrate to you is how to actually lure the dog into the sitting position. Um, there is some confusion with this occasionally. Um, so what the actual lure is going to look like is just like this. Here she comes. So all we're going to do is we're going to take it from their nose and go straight back. Yes. Okay. We're going to lure. Nose and straight back. Yes. Good. Ready? And straight back. Yes. Good. So Hershey obviously already knows what that lore means. He already has a very strong sit in a lot of different situations. So um, it was a little bit hard for me to lure him right there, but the lure is one of the easiest things to do. Um, one thing that I always like to mention to people is that generally when I'm working with a dog, who um, is learning how to sit for the first time, I will kind of capture the cue. So after I mark that behavior and give them the treat, I'll say, good sit. Um, especially for really young puppies who are kind of offering me a default sit for another behavior, going ahead and capturing that cue with the behavior is gonna be a really easy way to introduce it. So after they do it, I'll say, good sit, as I give them their treat. If you have a dog who's being really resistant to sitting down, like maybe they don't want to, which occasionally Bruby does, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to step into the dog's space. What this does is it do, does one of two things. It either A, forces the dog to have to look up at a more extreme angle to see you, which is automatically gonna push their head up and their butt down. And then additionally, if we're stepping into their space, it's gonna make them wanna move back. So if their head is already going up and they're moving back simultaneously, most of the time they won't have any option but to sit down. Um, I'm gonna see if Koda will demonstrate this with me. I don't know if he will, uh, but I'm gonna give it a try and see, okay. Koda. Yes, good boy. Yes, good boy. Yes, good boy. So on that one, I wasn't even giving him the cue. Um, I wasn't showing him a treat or anything like that. The only thing I was doing was stepping into his space, which as you could see, forces him to back up and want to look up at me. So then he automatically just put his butt on the ground. So if you have a dog that's being really resistant, sometimes stepping into them like that can just kind of change their focus and their perspective. That way their butt has no option but to hit the ground. Thank you, so good. You're so good, I know, I know, you're good too, Hershey. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> I know, you're so good. But anyways, like I said, when we step into their space like that, it just forces them to change the perspective and eventually their butt is gonna have to go down to the ground if they want to look at you. So after we have our dog sitting, the very first thing that I like to do is start adding duration to that sit right away because if the dog learns that after I ask them to sit, they are not to get up until I release them, it's just gonna make it really easy to add my stay cue later on. So what this will look like is me asking the dog to sit, except I'm gonna wait to mark and reward that behavior until after they've already been on the ground for a couple seconds. So that's gonna look like this. Sit. Yes, good. Sit. Yes, good boy.
screws. Yes. Good boys. Thank you. So as you can see on that one, Bruce was being a little bit resistant. Bruce likes to try to get those free treats whenever he can, but all I did was step into his space and I kindly reminded him, Bruce, I would like you to do something for me. And he went ahead and sat. Meanwhile, the other two boys sat down and they waited patiently until I went ahead and rewarded them. And then they finally got up. So right there, you can see we already have some nice duration in our sit. Um, and by building this duration in this sit, it will just get the dog used to keeping their butt planted for longer and make it easier for you to introduce your stay cue afterwards. So after the sit, what we're going to do is we're going to teach our dogs a down. Boy, hey, hey. Thank you. Laddies, I tell you. So anyways, after we've taught them how to sit, what we're gonna move into next is the down. So what I'm gonna show you is a couple different ways that you can actually lure your dog into the down. Um, the most common one that most people know, obviously, is from the sitting position, and then you go nose to toes and straight out. So what that will look like is like this. Sit. And then again, we're going to go nose to toes and out. Good boy, Brie. Sit. Nose, toes. Yes, good boy. And as you can see, I'm going ahead and marking that behavior the very second that the dog's elbows make complete contact with the down. So they're already in the sit, and we're going to go nose to toes and down. Yes, good boy. Good boy, good down. Good down. Thank you, boys. You did a good job, too. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we're going to start tying our cue in as we know that the dog is going to be going down all the way into the down position. Um, you notice with Coda, I told him good down after he actually laid down. Um, and that's something that I would do with puppies if I was working with them for the first time, good down, good down. And just so that they can get used to hearing that cue with the action of actually laying down. That way, when you start tying in your cue, it'll just be that much faster for them to go ahead and automate it. If you're working with a client who would like to do more advanced training later, like maybe competition obedience or um, sometimes even agility, different things like that, you're gonna wanna be able to teach the dog to lay down right from the standing position. Now, you can do this with a lure as well, and what it's gonna look like is nose to toes and then straight back. This also works really well for puppies who are really young and really rambunctious, and maybe they have a habit of trying to chase the treat as you're pulling it forward. Um, you know, maybe they're just real wiggly and like they have a hard time keeping their butt planted on the ground. By doing it from the standing position, we're going nose to toes and straight back, which forces them to keep pushing back and back and back and back after that treat until eventually their butt has no option but to go down on the ground. Again, we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and capture that cue as their butt's going all the way down. Good down, good down. Um, and then I'm only gonna start tying that cue in when I know for sure that they're gonna go down every single time. Now I'm going to see, I know for sure Hershey will lay from the down, from the standing position, um, but I'm going to see if I can get him to actually demonstrate the lure for you. Okay, so again, if we're doing it from the standing position, actually, no, you're too good. Stay here. Come, come. Again, if we're doing it from the standing position, come. We're going to go nose, toes, and straight back. So obviously, Hershey is already pretty efficient in that, so I'm going to try it with Coda and see if I can get him to do a little bit slower version of that for you. Coda. Come here. Down. Stay. Coda, come. So again, we're going to go nose to toes and then straight back. Thank you. Thank 
Thank you. Good boy. Down. Thank you. Go boys. Cut up. So again, we're going to go nose to toes and slowly push back. Yes, there it is. Good down. Good boy. Thank you. Thank you. So as you could see, Coda was a little bit hesitant to follow that lure, um, but all of my dogs do have a really strong down from this standing position, and none of them have had to be lured in a long time. So I was trying to kind of reteach that lure for you guys using them. If you have a dog that isn't responding to either one of those lures very well, there is another trick that I have that I have taught some clients and that is using something that you're able to lure the dog underneath in order to get them into that down position. Um, the way that we would do this is by finding something that you can put your feet up on. And then what we're gonna do is try to lure the dog under our legs, rewarding them when they go down without ever working something like this. So again, we're down, we have our feet up. Ready? Yes, good boy. Good down. Good down, Ruby. Yes. Yes, good boy. Good down. Good down. Yes. Good boy. Okay. So, as you could see there, all I did was I made the space low enough that they had to get down onto their elbows in order to keep following the treat underneath. And inevitably, especially for large dogs, they're just gonna end up laying down to make it easier on themselves. Hey, you two. We're not playing right now. Um, and all that this is gonna do is give us the opportunity to mark that nice down behavior. So, same with the sit. Once we can get our dog to lay down, um, we're just gonna go ahead and add a little bit of duration to that down, which means that we are going to um, just delay the, <sighs> sorry. So after we get our dogs to start laying down successfully, all we're gonna do is the same thing that we did with the sit, where we're gonna ask them for a little bit of duration in that down before we go ahead and mark and reward. That's gonna look a little something like this. I could put the dog, the boys in the down and they would stay there and wait for me patiently until I offered them a treat. If you're working with a dog who wants to pop up really excitedly, um, which is a pretty common issue, especially when you're in a group scenario or if you're working with a really excited or a younger dog, if you have a dog that refuses to stay down as you stand back up after you give the lure, what I want you to do is slow way, way down. So what that's gonna look like down. Down. Yes. So instead of just standing back up immediately, yes. Good down. Good down. Yes. Good down. Good. Good. Yes. Good down. Good down. Yes. Good. Good down. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue talking to him calmly, telling him good down, and I'm going to move up slowly and reward him every time he lets me get further away from him. What you're eventually gonna see is that the dog is going to stay put in that down until you give them something else to do, as you can see with my boys here. Now, 
Once we get to this point where we know that our dog is going to sit and stay sitting or lay down and stay laying down until we tell them otherwise, this is going to be when we're going to go ahead and add in our stay cue. Now, when you're working on your stay, the very most important thing that you can do is to move super slowly at first. The slower you move in the beginning, the more opportunities you're going to have to reward them. And the more opportunities you have to reward them, the faster you're going to be able to move on later. Um, another thing you want to remember is that when you are teaching your dog to stay, the number one reason that your dog is going to get up to follow you is because they want to know where you're going. They think you're not coming back or it's because you have all those treats with you and they want to be able to get to those treats. So, when we're doing our stay, we always want to make sure that we are coming back to reward our dogs, okay? Um, and you never want to go too far too fast because every single time that your dog breaks that stay cue, you're actually undoing the work that you've already done. So when I'm very first starting my stay cue, um, it's going to look really simple and it's just going to be something like this. Stay. Yes. Stay. Notice how when I'm first starting my stay cue, I'm not even actually moving away from them. I'm just giving them the illusion that I'm going to be moving away by shifting my body weight back and then coming back and rewarding them for staying exactly where they're at. So once I feel confident that I can rock back and come back, I'm just going to start casually adding little steps in there. Stay. but I'm still coming right back to reward them. What we're teaching our dog is that if they stay put and they don't move no matter what, I'm going to come back and it is going to be rewarding for them. Stay. Yes. So once we can get to the point that we can move around in linear directions and our dog is gonna stay there, the next important thing that we wanna, or she leave it, lay down. Thank you. So after we have got them in our down stay and we know that we can move in linear directions and come back and reward them, the next thing that we're gonna teach them is to let us leave their line of sight and come back. Usually the easiest way that I like to teach this is by walking circles around the dog. Um, and you'll see your dog trying to shift to look at you as you're doing it. That's fine. We don't care if they shift. We don't care if they try to look at us. We just don't want them to move. Um, by doing this exercise, what we're teaching our dog is that even if we completely leave their line of sight, if they just stay right there, they stay put, that we are going to come back and be able to reward them. So what that would look like is something like this. Stay. Good. Good stay. Good stay. Good boys. Now, you could see as I got behind the boys, especially Coda, he's turning around at that pivot point. As soon as he can no longer see me here, he's going to turn his head the opposite way and wait for me to come back. Lay down. Thank you. Stay. So, again, what we're teaching the dog is that it's okay for us to even completely leave their line of sight because we are going to come back and it is going to be rewarding. Now, let's say you start working on the circles. Stay. And you get to about here and you think that your dog is going to pop up. Okay? That's okay. We're still working on trying to get away. However, what I want you to do if you notice that your dog is about to pop up, I want you to stop wherever you're at, tell them good stay, and reward them for that. Because again, we're adding new movements, we're adding new things that your dog has never seen before. So as we progress, it's important to reward those baby steps, not just the big achievements. So if you can only get halfway around at first before you stop and reward, 
it's better to stop and reward halfway than it is to push it and have them break that stay. Because if you give them that stay and they break it, it now means nothing to them. Um, they've learned that they don't have to listen to that stay command. So again, we're gonna start short, we're gonna start really easy, and we're gonna reward for all of the baby steps in between. So once you have a completed stay, you should be able to completely leave the room and come back and your dogs are still gonna be there. That's what this should look like at the end. Put it down. Stay. 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 Yes. Some good boys. That's some good boys. That's some good stuff. Good boy. As you can see, I was able to completely leave the room, go around the corner, come back, and all the boys were just sitting there patiently. Why? Because I have taught them that when I tell them to stay, if they stay put, regardless of where I go or what I'm doing, as long as they stay put, it's going to be rewarding for them. So that is everything you need to know about sitting, laying down, and starting to work on your stay. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to either reach out to me directly or drop it in the training forum and I'll uh, be sure to answer any questions that you might have. Um, I hope, <laughs> I know you did so good. I hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll be back for lesson three.